In this section, we will explore several different techniques for improving the automatic quad wrap, as well as repairing the scanned mesh before it is quad wrapped. How you proceed will depend on how much detail you wish to retain. While the quality of the scan can directly affect the retopologizing process, the subject matter itself may create the challenges, as with this fox skull. A quick visual inspection shows a few potential problem areas. Narrow gaps could be bridged if the faces are too big. The pointy teeth tips may not be covered for the same reason. Thin areas may allow faces to drop to the other side as well. Let's go ahead and add the quad wrap at 2% size. 2% is too coarse to define the basic shape of the surface. 1% is not quite enough, so let's use 0.75. At this size, the mesh appears well covered with only a few open edges. This is a good time to assess the mesh for multiple bodies. Switch selection to select element and hover the mesh. In this case, there are clearly two bodies, so the conversion type will automatically be changed to power feature on conversion. For speed optimization, especially when adding other SOLIDWORKS features to the tree, the conversion type is set to power body. This prevents unnecessary rebuilds of the normally heavy quad wrap mesh. Now you can use quad fill to repair simple holes. Many are clearly visible with their light green edges. You may need to delete a face or two before filling. At some point, you will probably need to use isolate open edges to see the remainder. Note the reference mesh remains visible around each area to provide context. Select an edge or face to make zooming and orbiting the viewport on the target area easier. With this model, Isolate Open Edges has revealed a lot of interior problem areas. This is usually the point where you will want to decide whether to go ahead and repair the quad wrap, generate a tighter quad wrap, or go back and repair the scanned mesh. Let's go with the quad wrap for now. You can press Isolate Open Edges at any time to clear the repaired sections and check your progress. If faces have dropped through and attached to the other side, you will have to delete them until each side can be filled independently. By default, Power Surfacing uses a graphics-based pushback, so you can always see the sub-D faces as you retopologize the reference mesh. At the bottom of the control panel, you can turn off the pushback entirely, or just adjust it to give yourself a less confusing view. In this mesh, there are several interior areas that were poorly covered. If you want them included, you will want to re-quad wrap at a smaller face size. Pressing quad wrap again will automatically clear the current wrap. Cleaning the reference mesh before quad wrap is the recommended procedure. Repairing the reference mesh rather than the sub-D will save time in the long run should you decide to run quad wrap at a different setting. To edit the reference mesh, enter Edit Mesh Mode, Paint select the area you wish to repair, and from the right-click menu, select Edit Faces. Hide the reference mesh and make the repairs. Accept the changes, and then either select the new area to modify, or accept the edits and quad wrap. To isolate a hidden section of the reference mesh, add a temporary quad wrap, isolate open edges, select and zoom to the target area, Exit the Isolate Open Edges, enter Edit Reference Mesh, paint the correct area, enter Edit Face, and make the changes. After the repair, you can and should save the repaired reference mesh through Tools, Power Surfacing, Save, Save Reference Mesh as OBJ or STL. This is a good time to inspect the teeth to see if more geometry will help capture the pointy ends. With most, you will see a flat cap back away from the end. Logically, you would think that a simple extrude would be the answer, but extruded geometry is not automatically constrained. The best workflow for improving pointy areas is to delete the end face or faces, switch to screen coordinate space, 
flatten the edges using scale, and then, while holding the A key, use Extend to build the new faces that are constrained to the actual topology as you pull. Where five-sided faces were created, you can erase edges to improve the geometry as it tapers towards the point. And finally, use Fill again to close the hole. If the reference mesh has large areas that you do not want to snap to, you can delete them and replace them with Quad Fill. I'm turning off edge visibility and using transparency for this operation. Paint Select a border for the fill, delete it, select the remaining center by element and delete, and now Quad Fill. Quad Fill is affected by curvature, but Quad Fill faces do not constrain to the mesh and will be ignored during shrink wrap. If you find an area on the scan mesh that has a razor edge that does not wrap well, you can delete the faces on both sides of the edge, making sure you leave enough space to solve the connection. Use Paint Face to define the edge on one surface. Then use Quad Fill or Smart Fill and tweak to finish.